Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we're going to continue looking at the page object model for WebDriver.js. So the agenda for this video is to simply look at where we left off, and that was looking at the home page class, and to expand a little bit more on it so that our understanding of the page object model will hopefully become a little bit more solid over time. The first thing we're going to do is navigate back to the test web app. So we're going to go to the testroom.com and we're going to scroll down and hit the test web app, which I built for you guys. And once we're here, we're going to open up the script that we wrote in the previous video and just see where we left off. So in the previous video, what we did was we created this home.js file, which is basically a JavaScript file. And the first thing we did was we created a class and then we exported that class as a new instance of itself. We wrote a constructor which would run every time that a new instance of the homepage class was created. And as part of the homepage class, we also wrote a function that navigated to the testroom.com forward slash web app. We also extracted the driver outside of the class so that we were able to use and access the driver from anywhere inside the class. In other words, when we create a class, the constructor runs and it creates an instance of the driver. And then when we call any of the functions, we are able to utilize that instance of the driver. Once we did that, we were able to move the web driver outside of the test and into the home.js file. So now, as you can see, what's happening is that slowly we've moved all the web driver stuff out of our test and into a dedicated home.js file. If we go back to our test, so this is what the test previously used to look like we basically wrote code which went all the way up to here, strictly speaking. Now, although this test currently is, strictly speaking, two lines, if you actually have a look, it is actually a single line test at the moment. Now, what I mean by this is, these are all the imports that we would have used anyway. And this is just simply taking care of that import. But if you have a look, our test or our script actually now looks much more cleaner. Now, why does it look cleaner? Well, why do I say that? Well, for now, when we had this, where we were saying driver dot do something, so driver dot find element, driver dot get this, um, even when we did all of this stuff, web driver build something with capabilities and, and, and all of this stuff, what that meant was when someone reads our test, it Although it isn't confusing, it isn't easy to read and it can help someone drive focus away from the test. And that isn't something you want. What you want to do is to be able to just look at a test and just read it. So if you just take all of this, we're saying driver.get and then a URL. Although a lot of technical people would probably understand this, it's very, very self-explanatory. This is certainly much more easier to understand because here what we're saying is homepage.navigate to the test room. This is very expressive, it's very descriptive, and it's easier to read. Now that said, let's say for some reason this URL changes. If this changes and you've used this get in multiple different tests, you will have to go and change this URL in every single test where you've called or where you've actually written this line of code. However, if you do it this way, where you call this method in however many tests, if the URL changes, then the impact on you is to go and change it just here, i.e. in just one place. So at the end of the last video, I said that by writing page objects, you do end up making your test easier to maintain, easier to read and promote code reuse. Then this, although it is at the moment just a single line, it is doing all those three things. It is easier to maintain 
because if something changes, you change it in one place. It is easier to read because this is literally much easier to read versus that. And you can promote code reuse, i.e. once you've written this method once, you can use this same method in as many different tests as you like. So with that said, now let's actually go and do a little bit more. So now why don't we try to actually finish off by just implementing this particular bit of the test in our page object. So what we can do is we can copy this and in here we can say something like click on adoption link and we can paste in the click and then just close it. So now because of the way we've structured our home page class once we copy in this particular method here which is all it's doing is clicking on the objection link via css and it's using the name attribute and it's trying to find a nav underscore adopt value for that attribute it is basically trying to map the adoption link on the home page and then just trying to click on it but because of the way you've structured the class all we had to do was copy this one line of text in and we don't have to change anything anywhere else so by using page of just this is promoting clean code this is an easy way of being able to copy something in from an existing test and not having to actually change anything on the home page itself now if we go back to our file and now if we say something like homepage dot click on adoption link assuming if our code works this should now click on the adoption link now let's save this and run it and let's see what happens Ah, okay, so it's complaining saying that this particular dependency does not exist in our test file and it doesn't. Why? Because we've simply copied it in and in this instance what we should have done was also copied in the variable. So this sort of does almost go against what I said where I said that you don't have to change anything. That's true. We don't have to change anything in our functions in our class but naturally if we're importing in anything that is new to the class whereby there's an external dependency we obviously have to import it in so with that import now done now let's try to run the test and see what happens okay fantastic so what happened was it opened up the home page. It then navigated to the test room. It then went back to the home page object and then it clicked on the adoption link. So this two line of code, albeit with the exception of this bit here where we're trying to print out text is actually doing the same thing as the bulk of this but the difference is this is easier to read makes more sense and the person reading this doesn't really have to understand JavaScript in order to understand what is actually happening so this is one way of using page objects to help promote code reading that helps one to understand what is actually happening so now if we just simply remove all of this this is what our script now looks like so this obviously looks a lot cleaner as well now of all the things that we're talking about and of all the aspects we sort of mentioned by using page objects we do help to build a better version of our scripts and over time 
we can utilize it so that things are simply a little bit more easier to manage. So what have we learned in this video? In the previous video, we talked about creating a class, doing some very simple URL navigation and making a few statements around the benefits of using a page object. In this video, we sort of looked at those benefits a little bit more and we explored why trying to take advantage of those benefits is a good thing. We expanded our homepage class to allow us to actually interact with an object and by doing that we now can see the benefits that we may gain by moving all of our driver code away from the test and into page objects which can then help to make our code a little bit more scalable over time. Many thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.